Okay, battery compartment and wires and everything compartment. I think I have just enough resin to put some fiberglass in this and make a thing. It's gonna need some ribs. I'll use this pipe for that. Oh, nice work, angler grinder. Ah, ribbity ribs. Six should do it. Uh, it's gonna be about four feet long. So that'll be more than one per foot. Yeah, per foot. Good measurement. Feet, you guys. Feet. Just measuring things with feet. I was really scraping the bottom of the barrel to get enough resin for this. And the resin is kind of old and getting thick, so it's hard to get it to soak in there. Whatever though, I got it. It's looking good. I pulled out that piece that I had on that side for the form. And hopefully I can get the rest of this out soon. I hope I waxed it enough, but I'm not totally sure. So I want to get it out while things are still a little bit... Uh, like not, not totally, totally cured. Because there's a point where you can get it out of the mold more easily before it's fully cured. Oh, it came off nice and easy. So happy about that. All right, now I just need to let it cure a little bit. It's out in the sun right now. 10 or 15 minutes of that, it should be good and solid. Oh yeah, sun cures polyester resin fast. So don't work with it in the sun. You're gonna be trying to roll on hard stuff. Put it in the sun when you're ready for it to be totally cured. Oh, just waiting for my fiberglass to cure. Cure. If I could stretch my back out. Not stretch it out. Whatever doing fiberglass like this, it's always a lot of this. So it's like, you know, doing this for like two hours and then stand up. It's like, it's hard to get totally straight. I think it's getting better. Oh, can you see where it is? Right up there on top. Right up there. Right there. Still a little bit sticky. However, everything is solid. And I think I can take it out of here. Yeah, a bit sticky. So I, I, I put the ribs on the inside instead of on the outside. So... When I put the batteries in, they'll rest up on top of here and they'll have an airspace under them for ventilation. I think I might drill a bunch of holes in down here too, wherever the batteries are. Also, if I'm storing stuff up here, because I'm going to put like my lunch and stuff up here, uh, it's not going to roll all over the place. So if I put a apple, yeah, apples roll, say I put an apple up here and I'm in some waves and things are rolling around, the apple's you know, going to stay in this spot, not going to roll to the other end where I can't reach it. Mmm, good thinking, good thinking. Oh, it is a little bit windy. Oh, is that gonna blow off? Oh, I don't want that to blow off. I guess I can put some metal stuff on top of it. I think it's sturdy enough that I can handle that. Well, that's not gonna blow off with those on there. All right, let's get out of here. Blue, while that's drying, Go make some wire holders. Oh, I just dropped one. That was much nicer. All right, happy McStrumpkins. Let's get in there.
work pretty well. Should be plenty of space for batteries and electronical gobbledygook. And some lunch and switches and, well, switches are electronical gobbledygook. Yeah. Huh. Wow. I guess I can start connecting wires to things. Oh, batteries. Hopefully I've got something that fits in these. Oh, those totally fit. Nice. Except these screws are too long, so I'll have to cut them. I don't want to waste half the screw, so maybe I'll cut them with an angle grinder, fix the threads, put a nut on there, and make a second screw. So I only need one of these and one of these for each side of this. This is where uh, the wires attach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alright. Use my hacksaw instead of the angle grinder because it doesn't make such a mess of the threads. Clean them up a little bit with a file. Yeah, those look pretty good. Wait a minute, didn't I buy like a whole bunch of just random screws not that long ago, stainless? Where did I put those things? Well, I went and checked my workshop, they were right where I thought they'd be. I have two kinds of screws that might fit. Well, this has the right size threads, but it's still too long to screw in all the way. The shorter ones have a slightly wrong thread size. I forced one in, <clears throat> and now it fits. However, I don't think I should do that a bunch of times. You know, I had to mess up the threads to get it in. So, I'll leave that one. But uh, I don't want to risk snapping off a bolt in there. Alright, I guess I'll just stick with what I was originally doing. Alright, I got all those connected. Now I can connect my wires. Hmm, now what? Okay, charge controller. One of these batteries was a little bit higher voltage than the rest of them, so I connected them all in parallel. So they're all connected across here, across the positives, and then across the negatives. So that way, the higher voltage one can leak out into the lower voltage ones and level them all out. Kind of like if you have a bunch of different cups of different levels of liquids, and then you attach them with little tubes across the bottom, the, the liquids will all level out to the same level, same height. These were only off by a couple tenths of a volt, so the electricity is going to flow pretty slowly, and they hold so much energy, this is going to take a while. So, I'll move on to my next step while these are leveling out, uh, per the instructions. Well, I didn't look at the instructions because I've already used these before, but I got the little jumper in my charge controller here set to 48 volts. I think all the rest of the settings are fine. Alright, what is this mess of gobbledygook I've got here? <laughs> 